Hi guys. So today we are doing 13.2 a volume of cones. And a lot of what we did on the other one is the same as this one. A lot of what we talked about in regards to the volume of cylinders is the same as this one with one exception. Do you remember how a triangle is half of a rectangle? A cone is one third of a cylinder. So if you remember that a cone is one third of a cylinder, this entire section suddenly becomes much, much easier. So we end up with our volume. Our volume being equal to one third base times height. Or, as I find it to be far easier to do, one third pi r squared h. <coughs> okay? So I find this to be a far easier way of actually looking at it. Now remember, pi is 3.14. That has not changed. Pi is always the same. Pi is always 3.14. So if I had a cone, I have a cone. I know what this is. And I know what this is. This line right there is R. Okay, that's an R. And this line right here is H. So what I need to do are steps. R number one. Plug in the values. And number two, solve. You will have every single one of the values and it'll simply be a matter of solving. This is, like I said, this is insanely similar to what we just did when we were doing the volume of a cylinder. The only thing different is part of the solving is after you multiply everything, you divide by three, okay? Multiply everything, divide by three. That's it. So if I end up with, let's do an example first. So if I have a cone here that's like this, and the height is five inches, and the radius is two inches, okay? Radius is two inches, height is five inches. Volume equals one third pi r squared h. One third stays the same. Pi becomes 3.14. R becomes a two. It is still squared. H becomes a five. PEMDAS tells us we have to square first. So two times two is four. So I now have one third times 3.14 times four times five. Let me get my calculator. On 3.14 times, like I said, I'm doing all the multiplication first and then I'm just dividing. Times four times five equals, and then divided by three gives us 20.93 repeating. Inches cubed. Remember, volume is always cubed. Okay, that is all that we're doing is volumes of cylinders, uh, sorry, of cones. So yeah, that's all that you need to know about how to do the volume of a cone. I'm going to go back to the um, beginning and
start working through the pages. So page 407, modeling the volume of a cone. A cone is a three-dimensional figure with one vertex and one circular base. To explore the volume of a cone, Sandy does an experiment with a cone and a cylinder that have congruent bases and heights. She fills the cone with popcorn kernels and then pours the kernels into the cylinder. She repeats this until the cylinder is full. Sandy finds it takes three cones to fill the volume of the cylinder. What is the formula for the volume of a cylinder with a base of B and a height of H? So, step one, volume equals base, um, yeah, base times height. Step two, what is the area of the base of the cone? Uh, the area is pi r squared because it's a circle. Step three, Sandy found that the bases and height are the same. So one third times the volume of the cone is equal to the volume of the cylinder. Okay, all this in light brown is the uh, steps that are on your page 407. Step four, how does the volume of the cone compare to the volume of the cylinder? Volume of the cone is equal to one third volume of the cylinder. Okay, number one, use the conclusion from this experiment to write a formula for the volume of a cone in terms of height and radius. So basically what it wants us to do is write what we have up there. Volume equals one third pi r squared h. Page 408. The formula for a volume of a prism and the volume of a cylinder are the same. Multiply the height, h, by the area of the base. So v equals base times height. Always, always, always. In the Explore activity, you saw the volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder with the same base and height. The only reason we have to put in that one-third is because you see how it doesn't stay the same the whole time. It changes. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. That's why we have to divide. It's just like with the triangle. The triangle has a big bottom but a teeny tiny tip of a top, so we have to divide. Okay, same thing here. We go from big bottom to a tip of a top, so we have to divide. Example one, find the volume for each cone. So they plug in all of their numbers and multiply it through and then divide by three. Um, they do that for both times. Number two, how could you rewrite the formula for the volume of a cone using diameter instead of radius? All right, do we remember from yesterday, or from, not yesterday, a couple days ago, diameter is equal to two radiuses. So one radius is equal to diameter divided by two. So we just plug it in. 2 volume is equal to 1 third pi diameter over 2 squared h. All I did was plug that in for the r. That's all. Next page where we're given some actual problems. Find the volume of each cone around your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay. So let's actually work with these volumes and see what happens. Number three, I am given volume equals one third pi. I want to do r squared, but it's giving us a diameter, not an r, not a radius. So I'm going to do the d over two squared h. Okay. Not super happy with that particular equation, but that's the one we got. So I have one third, which stays the same. Pi becomes 3.14. D is 15 divided by two. 
squared and then h is 16. You see where I got all those numbers from? Okay, so let's work with this. 15 squared is 225. 2 times 2, 2 squared is 4. I'm just rewriting. Okay, so first off, I'm going to multiply across the top. So I have 3.14 times 225 times 16, which gives me 11304 divided by 3 times 4, which is 12. Divided by 12, which gives me 942 centimeters cubed. Okay? So that's number three. Number four. Volume equals one third pi. This time it is giving us the radius r squared h. One third stays the same. Pi becomes 3.14. R becomes the two squared and h becomes the three. Okay? with me so far so now we need to square our two squaring something is literally multiplying it by itself so two times two so i have one third times 3.14 times two times two which is four times three so 3.14 times four times three is 37.68 divided by three equals 12.56 foot cubed because it's always cubed that's how we know that it is volume all right so then at the bottom it goes into finding the volume of a volcano because a volcano is cone shaped for her geography project, Karen built a clay model of a volcano in the shape of a cone. Her model has a diameter of 12 inches and a height of 8 inches. Find the volume of the clay in her model to the nearest tenth. Use 3.14 or pi. First of all, they figured out what the radius was so that they didn't have to use the diameter. Then they plugged everything in and solved. Number five, the cone of the volcano Paracutan in Mexico had a height of 410 meters and a diameter of 424 meters. Find the volume of the cone to the nearest tenth. Use 3.14 for pi. All right, so, um, yeah, let's see what we got. Number five, volume is equal to one-third pi r squared h. That's fine. It tells us the diameter is 424. Remember, diameter divided by two is equal to r. So if we divide that by two, 424 divided by two, that gives us an r is equal to 212. So I can just plug that in. One third stays the same. 3.14 r is 212 squared. And height is, how tall is it? 410. Okay. So first of all, we are going to uh, do 212 squared, which is... One third times 3.14 times 44944 times 410. Okay. So let's see what that ends up giving us. Let's see what that mess does. 3.14 times uh, 44,944 times 410 gives us. Are you serious? <sighs> okay. Five, seven, eight, six, zero, nine, zero, five point six divided by three. 
which gives us an answer of 192869668.53. And then we round it so it ends up being a five. Oh my word, meters cubed. That is 19,286,968 and five tenths meters cubed. Good golly, Miss Molly. All right. Guided practice. Number one, the area of the base of a cylinder is 45 square inches and the height is 10 inches. The cone has the same area for the base and the same height. What is the volume of the cone? Okay, I'm going to go on to a new page. So we have the volume of the cylinder equals base times height. The base is 45. The height is 10. 45 times 10 is 450. Okay, that's what we have going on for the first part. Second part, volume of the cone equals one third volume of the cylinder. So it is one third times 450, which is 450 divided by three, 150. <coughs> so the answer is 150 inches cubed. Okay, done, easy. Number two, a cone and a cylinder have congruent heights. That means the same height and basis. So the same base, same height, same base. The volume of the cylinder of the cone is 18 meters cubed. What is the volume of the cylinder? Well, if the cone, so that was number one, this is number two. If the cone is 18, meters cubed. Remember, you can fit three cones into the cylinder. So the cylinder would be 18 times three because I can fit three cones inside the cylinder. So that gets me up to 54 meters cubed because I can fit three cones inside the cylinder. So if I multiply the volume of the cone by three, I will get the volume of the cylinder. I'm not writing all of that out. You can write it all out if you want to. Number three, find the volume of each cone. Okay. So number three, we have, um, Volume equals pi r squared h, oh, sorry, one third pi r squared h, <clears throat> where the diameter is six. So in order to find the radius, we do six divided by two, which is a radius of three, okay? Every time you're given a diameter, if you wanna use radius, you always divide by two. All right, so, one third, 3.14, three squared, what's the height? Seven. Okay, so three squared is literally three times three, which is nine. So it actually becomes one third times 3.14 times nine times seven. 3.14 times nine times seven is uh, <clears throat> 197 and 82 hundredths divided by the three, which gives us 65 and 94 hundredths. It wants it to be to the nearest tenth, so the four, nine knots on the four store, four says stay the same, we just lose the four, and have 65 and nine tenths. So number four, has again volume equals one third pi r squared h. 
One third stays the same, 3.14, because pi becomes 3.14. Our radius is 33 squared and our height is 100, okay? First thing we need to do is square the 33. So we start out here. One third times 3.14 times 33 squared, which is 1089 times 100. Gonna multiply the entire way across first. So 3.14 times 1089 times 100 is equal to 341946 divided all by 3 which gives us 113982. So 113,982 inches cubed. Okay, moving on to number five. I need more paper. <coughs> Okay. So number five, Gretchen made a paper cone to hold a gift for a friend. The paper cone was 15 inches high and had a radius of three inches. Find the volume of the paper cone to the nearest tenth. Volume equals one third pi r squared h. One third stays there. Pi becomes 3.14. R squared becomes, the radius is three, so three squared. H becomes 15. See, I'm literally just plugging in the numbers one after another, time and time and time and time again. So it becomes one third times 3.14 times three squared is literally three times three, which is nine times 15. 3.14 times 9 times 15 is 423.9 divided by 3, which is 141 and 3 tenths. Yay. Number 6. A cone-shaped building is commonly used to store sand. What would the volume of the cone-shaped building with a diameter of 50 meters and a height of 20 meters be? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, so volume equals one-third pi r squared h. It tells us that the diameter is 50. I do not want to know the diameter. I want to know the radius. In order to find the radius, we have to divide by 2. Two. So the radius is equal to 50 divided by 2, which is 25. So let's fill in. 1 third times 3.14 times 25 squared times, what is our height? 20 meters. Okay, that's where we're at currently. Let's do the 25 squared, because we always have to do exponents first. One third times 3.14 times 25 squared, which is 625 times 20. 3.14 times 625 times 20 equals 39250 divided by three equals 13083.3 repeating. So 13,083 and 3 tenths repeating. Okay? All right, and then number seven, how would you find the volume of a cone? Really? Um, that, that's how you would find the volume of a cone. Volume equals one third pi r squared h. I have 
no idea what else they could possibly want there. Unless you write in sentence form, I would substitute in 3.14 for pi. I would square the radius, then I would multiply the 3.14 times the squared radius times the height, then divide all of it by three, and that would give me the volume. I mean, if you want to really sit here and write a ton, you could do it that way, but yeah. I think you can do the other parts. You should do just fine. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.